Greetings one and all. This is Greg Pelliquin, also known as G. Pelly. And he's joined by Joe Nassif. A.K.A. Jojo. Hey. Uh, today we got, looks like, Chris Hong playing uh, Red, White, Blue Flash against Daniel Schwery playing Junk Tokens. Okay, so it uh, looks like with Chris's deck we've got um, the usual... Cast of characters here. It's uh, Guys to St. Trash, Snapmaster Mage, Azorius Charm, various Red Burn spells. Um, Chris can be fun pretty reliably playing this uh, this blue white tempo style of deck. This gets copied by Red, sometimes not. It depends. Yeah. Uh, this is this is what he's most comfortable playing. He plays it very very well. I've played him every week. Yeah, he he loves the deck. Um, the Junk Tokens list uh, seems pretty good. It has uh, the token makers you want to have: Lingering Souls, Soren, Garrick Relentless. Uh, has a accelerators in the form of Arbor Elf and Pilgrim, and tops off at one of Armada Worm and Angel Serenity. Yeah, so it looks like um, some early just some early assessments of the matchup. It looks like um, if, if Daniel has a uh, a good draw that can just uh, power out creatures, Chris can be on the back foot pretty quickly. Um, so it's gonna be very. This is be almost matchup is very tempo dependent. Uh, and again, this is it's tr typical of this format. Um, I like uh I like the call of conclave in uh Daniel's list. Um, Watch Wolf is never bad. Uh, in token yeah. form with the intangible virtue, uh, it just it, it's so fast. So one of my favorite starts with this with this title deck, like something like um with Daniel's deck, it's like a Green Source, Avison Pilgrim, um, turn two lingering souls, and then flashback souls with uh, virtue backup. It's a very strong call. He's got four of each of those, and so he can make it happen. It's certainly possible. Yeah, I like uh, I like Borderland Ranger. I, we were talking about this last week, and Borderland Ranger just seems to be something that you want to be playing if you're playing green and trying to uh, fix your mana base. Yeah, it makes a it makes sense in this tech too because Farseek's not really getting you anything because a lot of your power stuff's three anyway. So yeah, it doesn't really matter all that much. But he's correctly has four Arbor Elf and four Pilgrim to maximize the one three curve we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, looking at the sideboard for the junk tokens, um, no. it's not it's not so sh not so sure he's uh planning on been planning on playing a blue white flash. I could see. So it'll be interesting to see what he brings in after this game one. Okay. Well, we'll look at that in just a bit. Here looks like they're they're getting underway. So um, no, Chris has does have bonfire of the damned and um. He was classy enough to write Bonfire of the Pooh for us on here. That's that's uh, amazing. Uh, but fortunately, we were correctly able to decipher what card that is. Yeah. Uh, it's also two Thundermaw Hokites, so there's a couple of explosive cards here that can clear away the, the mess of tokens, and that's going to be uh, important here, at least for game one. Um, so it looks like Chris is on the play. Both players start at seven, and we got a Hollow Fountain start. I see Glacial Fortress, Pillar of Flame. Oh, no Mana Dork for Daniel. Temple Garden Go. So that's going to put him on the... So being on the draw and no mana, mana uh, producer is going to put him on the back foot quickly. Chris is a land heavy hand though, so not I don't see a whole lot to punish here. Yeah, it looks like four lands and a, I a spell. A, I see a bunch of lands. It looks like a dissipate. Dissipate. Yeah. And yeah, this is a slow one. But, um, it, Daniel really needs to, to get to get going here. Is now like lingering souls. He's going to run ahead first and dissipate Chris's hand. <clears throat> and so why do we keep this hand open? No, yeah, if you're Daniel, not having a turn one or turn, turn two, two plays. So this really is Lingering bad. Souls, probably. Oh, Borderland Ranger. Ranger. Oh, yeah. Dissipated. yeah, Chris is going to uh, immediately dissipate anything there. Yeah. Just about. Um, however, Chris doesn't have a lot of action. He's got land, pillar, pillar flame, feeling a dread. Feeling a dread. Yeah, not a whole lot going on over there. So maybe, like, it's it might be better just to wait on that. On yeah. That dissipate there, actually. I think he thought too quickly. Like, that's now I'm thinking about the pillar. The Borderland Ranger is a little low impact. That's another Portland Ranger. Yeah. Well, this next turn, Chris will be able to play land and then have uh, Snapcaster dissipate, so this isn't too bad for him. Right, so what if in this situation, Daniel instead had either Soren or Lingering Soul suddenly dissipating, which really bad. Yeah, yeah, then then he's uh, way in the, way behind. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got a Restoration Angel in his hand, too, so that'll let him at least get started. So are we going to Restoration Angel to start attacking, or do you want to use it to flashback Snapcaster later? What do you, do you think just getting I, up there is good? I think he's, yeah, I think he's going to put it out there. Um... He probably he actually you know seeing that seeing the woodland cemetery now he'll probably hold it back and and just keep it safe. Oh, there there he goes. goes. Yeah, I mean, might as well put him on a clock. It's yeah. not, not like a borderland ranger is gonna do much at this point. No. All right, cool. Oh, he's right. having a little trouble drawing that card. Must be a good one. Yeah, it's, it's a red source. It's definitely a good one. Yep. Yeah. I'll just get that borderland ranger off. Oh, I don't. I don't even think you need to kill it yet. Is no, it? you want to keep up snapcaster dissipate. So he's probably just gonna play it untapped and pass. Yeah, I like that play too. Yep. 
Because the Boiling Ranger itself is, isn't doing anything. There's a Thrag. Oh, he is killing it. Oh, wow. I don't like that play. No, me neither. Especially what? knowing there's a Thrag test about to come down. Uh, anytime what, somebody's what, playing. Wait, did he see a Thrag test? He didn't see it, but anytime somebody's playing these colors, you could almost suspect a Thrag test. Oh, yeah, yeah, this play this plays bad because the Boiling Ranger doesn't really do anything. And I like to have the dissipate mana up so I can stop whatever he's doing. Absolutely. So here's the thing if you keep a hand like this with little action, with Daniel, especially he snap kept like he did. He, what do you suppose he's going to have? A high top end, right? Yeah, absolutely. He he had a card that he felt was good at the high end. Yeah, and now Chris is blind. Yeah. Immediately. Uh, so, like, I think he, he... Yeah, I think he's a little quick to kill the... Uh, now Chris is basically living off the top. I, don't, I didn't see what that was. Oh, I, I thought thought okay. Okay. We, we can yeah. race. We that's, got a race. That's a race. That's a good top deck. Yeah. I mean, just because that, that worked out for him doesn't justify the play, in my opinion. No. So let's see, what well, does he have? He can chop against the Yes. Sussman's Charms, O Ring. There's a couple things we can get we can get back into it with. Yeah. We can't really see Daniel's hand, so and we no, could. No, oh, there's there's a test. And, and Angel Serenity. Both will enable it. Well, he's going to play. He's going to probably bash with this Thrag Test. Could play the second one. Yeah. And just turn it up your race. He has the other land for the Angel Serenity to follow it up with an Angel Serenity. Okay. So. Well, Chris should be ready with the counter spell. Yeah. He sh that, by then, he should be keeping counter up, yes. Yeah. All right, so there's one, two. Oh, he still has oh, charms it. Good. I yeah, like it. That's good. good. Play. Yep. Take the winner out of Chris's sails here. Good. It's a good play. All right, and then what are we doing here? Two. Technical virtue? Oh, call the kind of call Okay, call great. Yeah. So now he's back ahead on the race. Yep. All right, and then get in for five there. Yeah, absolutely. And then Chris, need, guess what? Chris needs a top deck again. Yep. I'll come back to I'll come back to pillaring the Borderland Ranger. Is it Bonfire? <laughs> he deserves the bonfire. He deserves here. the bonfire. Oh, he just snap put it in his hand. Yeah, so wouldn't have been embarrassing if it was the bonfire. Oh, that would have been bonfire of the poo. <laughs> well, uh, it seems Chris. Well, Chris still does have the feeling of dread. So now he also has dissipate man up. Right. Um, with the snapcaster, so he's technically not behind in the race. Well, he can't dissipate. He can't snap cast. Like plug and play untap means he doesn't have access to both. Yeah, Daniel should be attacking here instead of playing pre combat spells. Yeah. Um, unless it's something that That's affects terrible. the board. Yeah, yep. Yeah. He couldn't do that fast enough. Yeah. You gotta get in for eight, which is cool. And Chris is still way behind, but he has the potential to get back into this. Right. All right, so probably going to five. Mm -hmm. And Angel Serenity's still very alive. Yep. And there's no counter magic for uh, Chris yeah. for Chris anymore, so Angel Serenity is very, very alive. We're gonna, yeah, Chris is good. One's gonna be living off the top. Again, I'm, I said once before, but uh, pillaring that borderline ranger, let's put let's put him behind. Yeah, absolutely. Now, like that one little play of two, three, three or four turns ago dictate the pace of the match. This might go on a little bit longer because of because of feeling a dread though. So he has a couple of turns. Yeah. All right, so we we got another. Is that another Hellkite? Okay? Yeah, running good. Oh wow, that's it. It's, it puts it's... him to one. I don't think it's well. No, it is it is enough because he can play Thunder Maw, take him to one, and then have feeling a dread. That is good, but the Angel Serenity is gonna put him put him. Yeah, away, the though. Angel. But you can't know that. Like this no. is, uh, like Chris has, has drawn very very well. He's got feeling right here, <clears throat> in by a turn or two. But the angel. But once again, it's gonna be up to Chris to peel. We're gonna need to see something awesome. That that's when the miracle bonfire comes. Well, actually, he's drawn just searing spirit pillar of flame. Any of his burn, many burn spells. Absolutely. Uh, is it charm can second blame cycle into something better? There's the, there, there's the feeling of dread. All right, so tapping him down and then angel. I'm going to say, hey, buddy, have it. We always check this number two in his hand. Does he have the Angel Serenity? Yeah, we we saw it earlier. You might, does he have one number seven? Is that the issue? You don't have one number seven? That's probably yeah. the issue. Because I, I can't imagine him going into the tank and not playing Angel Serenity. I should, I should also point out that Chris has exactly two Hellkites in his list. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Uh, looking at Chris's list, he has a lot of one-ofs. What do you think of that? Uh, it's, I think it's okay. So one is one, okay. Wait, what? I'm confused. He has a threat test, doesn't he? Um I thought he had a threat test. Threat test got the Oh right, right. Do you not have one number seven for Angel? No, I guess not. Wow. He has intangible virtue in his hand, that's what it was. Maybe that Chris takes it. Wow. So those back to back Thunder Moss did it for him. But yeah, so anyway, back to your question. The the, the, the one drops just enables some utility with the deck. Yeah. There's a lot of these cards like Essence Scatter Syncope. It's actually short on counter spells, to be honest. Not a lot of main deck counters, just one second pick, one instant scatter. And I guess, is it charm? So three? Yeah. It has a. Uh, oh, and three dissipates, so six. Yeah. Okay. 
the the thing I like <clears throat> about it is the multiple one ofs with like the is a charm. That mm. way, uh, cards that might seem dead at the time or not needed, you could just like filter through at instant speed. Yeah, right. So, what inter what's interesting here is what Chris saw was essentially a junk deck. I don't think he saw any token cards. No, unless he, he saw let's see something tangible virtue and Daniel Scoop. I didn't. Because it was facing the camera, so maybe he saw that. Right. But otherwise, you could just think, hey, it's a junk deck. I'm not going to be able to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sideboard accordingly. Right. And, and miss on, on the tokens. Because there's it's a set of caster in the sideboard. And do Supreme Vertex, which are fantastic in this matchup. Uh, seeing, and, seeing, and the uh, is good, too. Seeing green-white, <clears throat> seeing green-white, you almost, uh, do you almost assume that they're playing Lingering Souls with the black in there? Not necessarily. Well... Probably a couple. Can you can you think of a deck that would in current standard that would play a deck with that didn't have an uh well, lingering souls? One thing considers lingering souls is relatively badly positioned right now. Because of because of some of the aforementioned set of casters and playing my Hellkites. Um so I think what Chris wants to do is board out a lot of the one for one cards. So like I don't like Steering Spear here. Okay. It doesn't do anything. Pillar Fly might be okay though. Uh, but like a lot of this, while these little return spells aren't gonna do very good against the deck that's based on two for ones. I probably keep the pillars so I can so I can pick off the one drops because um I can pick off the elves and stuff early on slow Daniel down right. So but searing spear doesn't do what you want. I'd get searing spears out of there. Um, that's where I'd start and then probably at that point. Well, that's at least three cards. So I can bring in is instead of caster at Supreme Brick. Right, one more card here for if I'm gonna do that. Um, looking at Daniel's list aside, some cards in. Looking at the sideboard, mm -hmm. I guess the blue white flash. Uh, what do you think of Appetite for Brains? It it hits the, it hits the um, Thunder Maw. It hits uh the Angel. Pretty much his threats. Yeah, it stops there. Yeah, and it stops That's there. It. So, I, I, I wouldn't board it in. So he's not gonna bring that in. Uh, Death Red Shaman's good. Because you can pick because it makes Snapcaster and more than Hunt worse. Right. So yeah. so those are good. And it gives you a little bit of little bit of life and that kind of thing to keep going. So he would probably bring in the two Death Rite Shamans and possibly the other Angel of Serenity? Possibly. If you thought he had Pikes, maybe Sun, you could make a case for Sun and Growth. In this style deck, though, I'd almost rather just have Abrupt Decay here. Yeah, I don't well, see it in his board. Yeah, well, like, what What are we, uh, what four plus um, artifacts and gems are there that you really want to get rid of? It makes sense just to play Abrupt Decay here. Yeah. You can pick off more, you have more options on what you can kill. Absolutely. What is he taking out of his main deck? It seems like he's pretty much on a plan with the tokens. He has the the Garrick's of Soren, uh O-ring, which I feel is very necessary for him. To I think Garrick, I think Garrick Lens is really bad here because because yeah. it gets picked off by Restoration Angel and uh, Thunder Mile Kite. Right. So that would be my pick. I would I would get rid of the Relentlessness to start and get in the Death Rite Shamans. That, that's probably that's that's probably the easy things. Um, you can make a case for the bringing Celestial Charms too. Yeah, throwing additional creatures. Um, Sever is pretty unimpressive here, so maybe that like I'd rather have like a ring than the Sever here. Being a light on removal, I like taking out the Garricks because it 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 really does nothing for you to play Garrick and have no way to protect it. Yeah, so you play Garrick and you go mm, make a wolf. They go oh, okay, flash and restoration angel kill it. Like, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, that's real bad. <laughs> uh, so okay, so Daniel will be on the play. We're really gonna put a high premium on hands with the, the one with. The, one elf. Yeah, I, I can't imagine uh, what made him keep that last hand where he couldn't cast the high end of his hand and didn't have uh, any men accelerants. Yeah, I thought, like when you're looking at opening hands sometimes, you got to really, like we said before, you really got to scope the play with your hand. Sometimes just because you have lands and spells doesn't mean you keep it. Right. I mean, you got to ask yourself, how likely is this to win me the match? That looks like an angel of serenity. Yeah, it's a vacuum angel. Looks like some lands. Is that six lands angel? It looks like six lands angel. I can't quite tell, but that's what it's like to me. Yeah, unless there's a spell right there behind Angel. He said he was going to keep it, I think I just heard him say. So. You can't. If that's six hand lands Angel, there's no way you keep that. Right. Absolutely not. Um, so, Chris, take some look in here. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like if, if that's really a hand Chris has got all the time in the world, do whatever he wants. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and plus, uh, if he's not playing anything for seven turns. That might be a pilgrim now, if I, if I can't quite tell. Behind the Angel? Yeah. That darker card looks a little difficult to tell. I mean, that's Death Rite Shaman. I can't 100% tell. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like Death Rite Shaman. Yeah, that's fine. That's possible, too. Mm. All right, so, Chris, so six cards for Chris Hong. Chris is going to six. And the thing with Chris's deck is it, it, it should... It, well, the, the good thing about most blue-white decks is they uh they mulligan very nicely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have a lot of cards to help mitigate that. Snapcaster helps you pick up and see the disadvantage you get. And you got Zori's Charms. Revelation. Good. Yeah. I'll get you back in the game. Alright, so let's see if this looks better than the seven. 
I'm probably still with Mulligan Daniels hand though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, he's he's playing too close to the too close to there. We can't see any of his against his hand. Looks like oh, Steam Vents, Hollow Fountain. I saw a Supreme Verdict. Supreme Verdict. Great hand. I keep that. Okay, that is a Pilgrim. Oh, Death Rite. Death Rite. There you go. Okay, so we're taking two play two life. What's the purpose of playing a Death Rite? Death Rite Shaman with no land. I'm paying two life. Yeah, there, there I'm is. I'm confused. None. Get in for one. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah, I guess. Sweet. There's the one. Sweet. <laughs> All right, and then go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this definitely. Terrible. Yeah. Because the one pillar, and suddenly you're just like, oof. Right. It's really bad. Okay, so what are we doing here? I see. I, don't, I, don't, I can't see his new cards yet. It still looks like lands. No, oh, he's getting in for two. For 18 turns, bro. Yeah, he's on a clock. Nice question, Saint Trap. Well, nice clock. Yeah, <laughs> just run it out there, Chris. Yeah, that's gotta be your play. Oh, there's the Tamio. Nice, just go. We got dissipate. Supreme verdict. I think just run. I like just cast him. Well, I guess we know his hands basically air, so it seems right. But in reality, maybe like Chris is playing more conservatively. Is that that's an Arbor Elf? Okay, so coming in three turns too late. Yeah, right. Uh, one more. Is he oh. think, is he considering flashing in um, oh, okay, ambush good. viper? Yeah, <laughs> that, seems, that seems terrible. Yeah, snapcaster mage. That's sort of that's sort of like he's the, thinking about. At this point, the shaman produces no real clock, and no. you, you have enough means to get remove it later on. So I, I think he's waiting for Daniel to overcommit and just supreme verdict, which seems yeah. reasonable. <clears throat> I mean, you're under no pressure. Ah, uh, now we're under pressure. Okay. Right. All right. And we immediately don't. I'm confused. What do we do it now? So what do you? I'm really confused. What yeah, there's no. There's no benefit. Of hey, the event. hey, I have a, I have a restoration angel. Wow. Well, and then and suddenly you're you're crushed. Yeah, you're blown out. Like yeah, I would. You well, definitely. even Azorius charm just takes one right out from under you. Right. There's a verdict. And that's good too. Yeah. yeah. That. See, I I guess Daniel has nothing else going on, but. Even so, yeah. Like this hand, this is not. There's, Chris is all time the world do whatever he wants. This is nothing happening over there. I mean, it's potential to play the Thrag Tusk here, but that's not even that bad. Not at all. He, well, he has Tammy on his hand. So who cares? Yeah. Who cares? We're in, we're in good hands here. Which it's, like, it's, like Chris, it's like Chris is insured with all state. <laughs> <laughs> there's lingering souls, uh, and we're de you definitely don't just flash it back here because potential severe exists. Be yeah. When static caster, I'll give you a static caster. Doesn't matter. Um, well, a little bit, because you can remove him later. Are we flashing back? Does he have virtue? Oh. There you go. Seems fine. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's Yeah, that's a better play. So I still would like casting the Geist there, and just and then and then going off now and doing it. I, mean, I don't play Chris's deck very much. I'm not, I don't play that style deck all that often. But I would, have, I would just turn through the Geist and let Daniel try to do something. Right, and just put him on the clock until he overextends to try to keep up, and then verdict. Yep, and then show him Tamiyo afterwards. Right. Uh, I mean, that, that seems perfect for me. Is it, was is it a Thunderbolt? Tamiyo? That was Tamiyo. Tamiyo. Okay. Yeah. That's still fine. Hits one of those guys. Yep, and then we can you can take you can take it down to uh, two here with a well-placed uh, downship. Uh, land Angel Serenity. What yep. do you think? It doesn't really or, do or much. Or Land Township, or like Flashback. Um, or land, um, flashback lingering souls township seems okay too because yeah. when he's playing Tamio here, he doesn't have static caster, he doesn't have detention sphere unless he's just like trying to slow roll it for value. Right. I think there's enough going on here where that can punish you. Yeah. So he sees the play here, flashback lingering souls, and then um, township. I, I don't hate this play. No, not at all. I don't. Uh. Yeah, and I I, I agree because playing angel serenity at this point is. Is obsolete. It doesn't get anything back for you except some mana dorks. Yeah. So it's irrelevant. No, no reason. Yep. Now the problem is Chris's hand. Yeah. You see what it is? Snapcaster flashback. Uh, Supreme, Supreme verdict. verdict. Yeah. Yeah. So it actually has to go blow up in your face here. So, so I guess maybe waiting might be better. I don't. I'm not. I don't know. It's a tough call. I guess that's hindsight speaking. We kept searching Spirin for some reason. I guess you can kill off with Red Guest. Maybe it's not all bad. That'd be my first pick to let's board out. Chris is surveying the landscape here. Sees seven mana. So, all right. The play should be easy. Yeah. Yeah. Easy play. And then lock down one of the color sources. Uh, probably. The, you think he's going to lock down the township? I don't think any of the mana matters unless he's no, light on white. Yep, it is township. Yeah. Cor and correctly so. Okay. So, Daniel, once again, back to the drawing board. 
with one card in hand. Yeah. Yep. Which we know we Angel of Serenity. We can't. We can no longer cast. Right. Uh, guess you can't cast anything. For you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that another angel? I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you just angel, angel. He has borderline ranger also, so you can't even cast an angel. There you go. Just gotta run the angel. Yeah, we gotta run the ranger out there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> borderline ranger? Question mark? As if he was going to force will it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess you could try to spell it, that'd just be awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. I hear those lines are good. Well, there's a couple creatures in the yard. Well, one. Yeah. I don't hate the play here of my cards. I don't I don't hate the play here of like Searing, of searing Spear and the, the stupid Ranger off the board, and then just casting Geist. I don't even hate that play. Yep. There's Geist. He's probably yeah. gonna end a turn spirit. Yeah, you can wait on the spear. Yeah. And then he'll uh he'll probably make a token. Yeah. And then I'm assuming next turn Tamio's just gonna start tapping down the angel. Yeah, Tamio does what Tamio does. Yeah. yeah I love Chris's position right now. But I mean it all again, I kinda think a lot of it comes back to keeping that opening hand that Tamio kept. Yeah. Oh, it was so I, slow. I wouldn't think twice about throwing the hand away. Right. Well actually both games for Daniel. He probably should have mulligan both games. I think so, yeah. All right, so I got two angels. So I don't, I don't hate the play here of angel, getting back some idiots in the graveyard. Yeah, to get back your two mana dorks. It's not the worst play. I mean, Tamiya's give a field day with it, but. <clears throat> All right, give him the thumbs yeah. up. All right, get back. Do you think? Uh... All right, well, looks like he's going to be crashing that Tamio, which uh, should get speared here. Yeah, pretty quickly. <clears throat> yep. There and then he go. gets to pick a creature more than not. Yeah. Tap a Tamio, crack back for seven, and and Chris is in the driver's seat. But it looks, it seems to be a three-turn clock for Daniel, uh, with, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, just an angel in his hand. Uh, it's not going to be good for him. So Daniel's next play would be Angel target to his Angel, get back Mana Dork, play Mana Dork? Yes. Yeah. Correct. So there's six. You're going to 12. Oh, nope, seven. You're going to 11. Yep. That's actually, is it actually less than that? Because he has Snapcaster in his hand, it's actually like two turn clock. Yeah. Uh, oh, he has Snapcaster now? Yeah. Yep. So actually, Chris does nothing here. It's because yeah. we use Let him cast the other Angel, tap it. With with Tamio and they're both couples because they're tapped and then you can just get it and kill him. Right. Alright, so then you take another draw. Can't really see what it is. Possibly a Thrag Tusk. Definitely has the Angel Serenity. Oh, it's a Soren. I see a Soren. That doesn't do much. Not at all. Oh, there's an Oblivion Ring. Not bad. Not bad. Chris shuffling the cards in his hand, uh, frantically hoping they turn into something better, but <laughs> they're still the same. And Soren should come down and make a dude here? No, it's, no this fight looks okay. Because the Oblivion Resolve, chances are the Soren's going to. Unless he has is it Trevor or something. Yeah. Chances are we're going to get the uh, get the second one, too. Well, he's, he's end of turn, he's going to spear the... Token? Yeah, and, and put him to two. One on the crackback. Two, four, eight, nine. Yeah, that uh, seems like what the play would be. So make a vampire here. <clears throat> and then he has to have an answer for the Geist. Well, he'll have the Angel, I guess, to rely on, but he'll still be way low in life. Yeah. He has Angel number two in hand, too, so that helps. All right. There's not much else to do here. I think we pass. Yeah. I think Chris is, I think he's uh, end of this turn. Chris is considering what to spear. As you can see, he's trying to do some math there. Yeah, either way, another certain spirit wins in the game. Right. And you're just getting rid of the token, seems correct. Yeah. Yep, there you and go. Chris sees it. There you go. I can exile that, Chris. Oh, that gets turned aside. So I guess he has no graveyard at the moment. 
What do we get? Oh, that's a bonfire. That'll do it. Oh, I remember when that card was fifty dollars. Skillful card. <laughs> so good. Yep. I I'm glad the miracle mechanic brings the skill on the back of the magic. <laughs> so that looks like it's gonna wrap it up for uh the Chris and Daniel match. He's yeah, just gonna... he's just dead. Yep. Yeah. That's that's it. And once again, Chris Hong playing blue white flash, uh proficiently. Yeah, he he plays the deck well. Absolutely. I mean, I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna face him every after them. No. I mean because of because of how he played this match, I think he played pretty well. So congratulations to Chris Hong for taking down the match. All right.